All right, so good evening everyone for a January competition night with the theme of household items. Um, to kick us off with any kind of announcements, uh, don't have any significant announcements other than just to talk about next month's schedule. So going into February, uh, so February 10th, Doug Mattis is going to be talking to us with some photography business insight that he's developed over the years. So I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. And then next month's competition is February 24th. It's all about street photography and street scenes. And that, again, that just to be clear, that's photography that records everyday life in a public place. And if you go online to find all sorts of examples for street photography if you are interested in com competing next month on February 24th. Do we have any new members here tonight? All right, no one is willing to admit being a new member. Okay. <laughs> By the way, can I make a correction? Sure. Your speaker's last name is Matthijs. Oh, Matthijs. Yeah, yeah. Thank he's, you. I had, he's I my had... uh, niece's uh, ex-father-in-law, so I know the guy. <laughs> but yeah, it's Matthijs, just so I... when you go to introduce him next time. Thank you for that correction. Yeah. I had not heard him pronounce his name, so that is good to know. Well, tonight's judge uh, stepped in relatively late last minute. I do appreciate his willingness to step in tonight. Uh, tonight. Steve Gottlieb. And thousands of his images of people, architecture, and landscapes have appeared worldwide in advertisements, annual reports, brochures, publications, including Smithsonian, Popular Photography, American Photo, and even the New York Times. And he is the photographer and author of five critically acclaimed books, including Abandoned America, Best in Show at the book, Chicago Book Fair, the, the Chicago Book Fair, uh, Gift Book of the Year, People in the USA Today, uh, and American Icons, a classic filled with beautiful images, moving and poignant. He's done travel workshops. He's run a, a workshop business that he may mention a time or two. He is a graduate of Columbia University's college and law school. He practiced law in private firms and the federal government for 10 years before focusing on his photography hobby, turning it into a vocation. So he's done it. He's a competitive tennis player. He's held many rankings over the decades, including in 2018, the number one doubles player in the United States in his age division. He has two sons and divides his time between New York City and the Hudson Valley. And tonight, Stephen Gottlieb is joining us and I will start sharing my screen here. Okay, so Steve, can you confirm that you can see my screen? I can see your frame and it looks like a rushing water. And then I see various members who are attending right. the meeting. Well, in that case, let me do that. Now can you see my... Now I can see what looks like a faucet in the upper left. Excellent. So we'll start off with novice color. And you know, how would you like to do this? I can go through them all quickly the first time just so you can get a quick view or we can go through them one by one. You can comment that way. How would you like to approach it? I think the best thing is if you just run through them quickly, and then run through them again, and I will try to comment on, on Excellent. them as, as best I can. Yep. All right. So here's the first one. This is supposed to be household items? Household items. That's correct. Hmm. And we're back at the beginning. Um, uh, am I supposed to hear that comment? No, I think that was background com conversation. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, 
Well, let's see. You know, first of all, let me just say, though I've judged about, I don't know, 50 some odd competitions, I haven't done it in a long time. You just caught me on, at a moment where you needed somebody and I thought, geez, I ought to help you out. So I'm a little uh, rusty. Uh, and my simple objective, in addition to, you know, giving an award or recognition is to see if I can improve your photography in whatever way possible. So, um, uh, uh, this is, you know, you start off with an interesting shape of the faucet. I, I find my eye going to that little drop that kind of doesn't belong there, but is, is interesting. But there are quite a few different things going on, different subjects, the toothpaste, the toothbrush, the water, and they're not uh, kind of held together uh, as, as well as they might, or maybe we have too many different subjects in there. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a nice effort and there's not too much clutter uh, and good shape, but uh, I think it needs a little more cohesiveness, okay? So household item, well, I'm not much of a drinker, so I don't think of this as a household item, but I guess it, it could well be. And it's, uh, you know, moody and dark, I think that it would benefit from a little more edge lighting, say on the right, you could put a little white card or something up there just to define the shape. So it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look too uh, lopsided. Experiment with, with reflector cards and mirrors when you, when you do a, a bit of lighting like this and you get interesting stuff like at the bottom of the bottle, it's rather interesting little, uh, uh, little pattern. So that's my observation about that. Yeah, whoa. Now, if that's in a household, that's a special kind of household. Uh, but, uh, um, okay, well, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's a, certainly an unusual subject and, and I find it interesting. Um, the lighting is just, way too uh, flat. I, th I think what you're getting is, is Gottlieb is the critic and always trying to improve. So, so don't be surprised if, if I sound negative, I'm trying to improve what you're doing. So you need to have more directional lighting. When you have round shapes like this, I think it would uh, uh, benefit you if you, hold on, something just popped up. Oh, okay. It's like duck, duck, go or something. Sorry about that. Yeah, try adding and subtracting light with, with more light or black cards or something so you get more uh, shape. A, a photographer buddy of mine has a video on lighting roundish objects. His name is Joe Edelman, E-D-E-L-M-A-N. And the number of videos he's put up, I haven't checked lately, but they're fantastic on subjects like this. Uh, next. Um, interesting uh, pattern and uh, always silverware to me is always an interesting subject. I did, I did a book of photographs that, that revolved in some measure uh, about silverware and glassware. It was a coffee table uh, a book that I did for someone. And, um, and so I just love this kind of stuff. I'd like the pattern. Although I think there's a little bit of uh, redundancy with the with the um, uh, the fork, I forgot tangs, tens. I forgot the name of the teeth of a fork. I should know that, but anyway, lined up a little bit too uniformly. And I have a pretty strong preference, with some exceptions, that something in the photo should be in focus. And here I'm not seeing anything in focus on so my eye has no place to settle down and feel like, oh yeah, there's, the, there's home base or something like that, okay? Somebody is really serious about their ice skating or this is a rental place outside the home. And, and I, I find this interesting. Uh, again, the lighting, um, you know, 
it, it just there's a, a little bit of a even though it's directional it doesn't have a kind of a shapeliness to it and so i think you got to work with the light a main light and a bounce light or a fill light and try different things until when you look through the camera you go oh that feels just right um i used to teach lighting for many years so i'm especially sensitive to it but i, I think everyone's eye is and the other observation I would make is the with a wide angle lens, you could make the foreground skates a lot bigger. Right now, they're, they're almost of the same value as the skates behind them. And I think they should have a little bit more impact. That should be where your eye goes to those foreground uh, skates and they're much smaller than they need to be. So if you were to, to use, um, a very wide angle lens, you could triple or even quadruple the size of those skates relative to the background. And let me know if I'm taking up too much time. I'm trying to do no, the best I can. Here. Um, we've got a relatively light, light load tonight, so you've got plenty of time. Okay. Um, okay, this has got that kind of old photo, slightly sepia uh look and i think that's a good effort uh if i ask what's the subject you know there are five five or six different things going on again i i don't want to overgeneralize, but usually I, I like kind of a main subject and then things revolving around it that that speak to it in some way or other or contrast with it so uh, here, my eye goes from the fire irons to the pine cones to the, you know, to the wood and so forth. And then there's a lot of wall and a lot of uh, that box, which are not as interesting as the objects. So construct your composition to make the objects more dominant and, and let the background be in the background. Background here, the stone wall and that wooden box uh, too, um, too prominent. But in each of these cases, you know, I see a good effort. It just needs a little more nudging. Okay, next. By the way, I should say, I didn't look at any of these pictures in advance. I like just reacting totally spontaneously to what's going on. And unfortunately, unlike live judging, you get no reaction to what you're saying so i don't know whether you're saying the guy's an idiot or that's a pretty good comment or what i'm just like i'm going off into like a black hole which is one reason i don't do a lot of this kind of this kind of judging but i was happy to help out here okay so what have we got here we got a bunch of books and secondarily some little uh, vases but it's just a bunch of books so one of, one of my favorite quotes, obvious though it may be, by a, a wonderful uh, photographer, he said, if you want to take more interesting photos, stand in front of more interesting stuff. It kind of says a lot in a few words. And again, it's obvious, but you got to think, you know, if these books were his, antique books, historic books, or books falling apart, or books that you had done on trips or something, and you focused in on some of those more interesting books, you'd have a more interesting, uh, a more interesting photo. And then you got some kind of uh, octopusy plant life in the lower right that looks like it's kind of reaching in and maybe wants to grab a book. So be conscious of every corner of the photo and make sure it's uh, it's working for you. And again, lighting kind of flat you know you have one light off to the right and that's doing almost all the work so there's no real uh, shapeliness or subtlety to it sometimes window light and a slow exposure is is uh, is better so what are we supposed to uh, do here so we have seven items which means that we get to pick a first and second place image okay and I can make these um, a little bit larger. Give me just a moment here. I can move this slider up. There you go. 
Okay. Well, I, I want to say that one reason I was interested in volunteering for household items is quite a number of years ago, I was giving a talk. I vaguely recall it was the Northern Virginia Camera Club. And at the end of my talk, I said, here's a piece of advice. Pick a subject that interests you. And I don't care how crazy it is. And then as you're traveling around and, you know, in your neighborhood or across the world, you know, look for that subject and build up a little library of it. And it gives you a little focus to, to your photography. It doesn't mean it's dominating it, but, you know, you keep coming back to it. And so I showed an example of bathroom photos at that slideshow. The bathroom photos got a better reaction than all my other photos. <laughs> I was like totally amazed. And that got me thinking, I wonder if anyone has ever done a photo of bathroom, a photo book of bathrooms. So I did that. It's called Flush. Um, I don't know if you can find any online, but <laughs> they're mostly, I retired and I mostly didn't sell them. They're sitting in my garage right now. Um, but I love bathrooms. So, uh, and, and it's an interesting subject. So I'm kind of liking that, uh, uh, that faucet photo. So I'm going to go with with that. Okay. And uh, and second with uh, forks. Uh, hang on, just a second. There we go. So we'll we'll start it, off. Go ahead. Okay. One quick thing. It's it's not unlike me to give something first place and then say, "Here's what I'd like you to do now with what you just did." A photo a really tight close-up of that faucet with the water streaming out and that one drop. Just that, nothing else. And maybe a slightly darker background, but the whole contrast of the water flowing perfectly and then the one drop. Yeah, thank you. You know, I'm finding that kind of, I don't know, that's interesting to me. Who knows why? Okay. All right. We'll start off with our second place image tonight and this yes. one. <clears throat> Tammy Smith. Is Tammy yeah, on? Yeah, I'm on, but there's just not too much to say about it. I put three forks on a you know foil background and shot it. So nothing, nothing exciting to say about it. Very good. Yeah, just work when you when you're doing something like this. I, I have this feeling that most people are a little impatient. I'm not saying you specifically, but people are impatient. They do something and they go, yeah, that looks pretty good. When I'm doing it, I would do, I might well have done this shot. And then I go, I wonder if I move this fork to the left and this one to the right and change the lighting. And I fuss with it over and over. I've done a fair amount of studio work and I, you, you got to be fussy and you got to try different lighting and different compositions and little sometimes little changes like a, a white card or a black card or, or a, another light can make a dramatic difference or selective focus, changing the focus. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And our first place image tonight is Amy Wikes. So I work in water and wastewater. So... I, I tend to take a lot of pictures of fire hydrants and then obviously faucets. So, but I appreciate your comments. I, I definitely agree. There was a little bit going, a little more going on than I probably should have, but I appreciate the comments. Thank you. Sure. My pleasure. And, you know, I've, I've photographed wastewater plants and they are interesting places, at least to a photographer who's visiting for the first time. I mean, the swirling sludgy muck uh, it may smell and it may not be appetizing, but I found it to be great subject matter. As long as you don't get any smell with your photos, no scratch and sniff. <laughs> yeah, that would not be good. All right, no scratch and sniff. Okay, we'll move on to novice monochrome, and I'll go ahead and do the same routine for you, Steve.
Yeah, we're back. You know, I took this shot. This was a, a, a trial shot for my book. Uh, and <laughs> I got a weakness for this crazy stuff. And I did research on how many people put the paper so it rolls over versus under. Um, anyway, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's interesting to those of us who would find it interesting. What can I say? I, I would crop that, by the way. Uh, you don't need all that space on the top. The shadow's important, but you don't need quite so much on the bottom. And it's a square format, but I'd make it a, a horizontal. And by the way, the, the white stuff, you know, you could make that more interesting. I don't know how. Maybe you have one sheet falling down or something. Something that's, that's, that's just a little catchier than what you got there on that roll. Okay, next. I'm just guessing this is the fork person. And... Um, Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's a little sharper than the other, or at least some of those. What the hell is the name of those? Uh, tines. Tines, thank you, thank you, tines, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a tine kind of guy. So that's, that's a kind of an interesting, interesting, uh, unusual arrangement. There's something reflected that looks like it doesn't fit. It's, it's, it's some like imperfection in the plexiglass or something, but it's catching my eye. And, and I would say not in a good way. Anything that takes your eye off the, the main subject that doesn't add in some way to it. And also the, uh, the, the main stems of the fork are brighter than the fork. And I'd rather the lighting emphasize the tines of the fork rather than the stems of the fork. Next. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. I, I, I like stuff like this. Magnifying glass forever makes for fun subjects. It could have been a little more powerful. So you, the contrast between what's in the magnifier and what's in the background, we've all seen pictures of somebody holding a magnifying glass up to their eye where one eye is, you know, 10 times the size of the other eye. So here it's not quite as, uh, as, as dramatic. Um, and uh, at the same time, it's, it's good. I mean, I would say keep doing stuff like this. Next. Okay, uh, this is a, just inherently to me an interesting shape. So I like the shape and I like, although it's not that obvious, but there's some um, striations, there's some movement in the spout, in the shadow area that, that catches my attention. The, the thing that would improve it, and I think it's a great shape. You don't need so much space on the black space on the right, I don't think, but anyway, the top of the um, pot, not nearly as interesting as the curve that's creating the spout. So less light on the top of the pot, more light on the curvature that's more uh, interesting to me. Next. Um, I assume that's a sharpener, but I can't, I can't really tell, but if you want to do a sharpener, that's got to be a sharpener. Do the sharpener, the extra knives. I want to feel a knife running through and being sharpened. And here it's laying at an angle which is giving me a feeling that it's static. It's not in, the, in motion through that thing. And then the other knives uh, uh, distract. You could prop up the knife vertically, you know, with a little clamp or something. 
So it would look like it's really happening. And then don't feel like you have to put in the whole knife. You know, get into where the action is. And one of the habits I got into uh, when I got into photography was I would take a shot and then I would ask myself, or actually what I would do is I'd use the zoom feature and I'd zoom in. Well, I started with film, but as soon as there was digital, I'd take a shot and then I would use the zoom button and I'd zoom in and I'd start cropping things out and ask myself, better or worse? And if it's better, then I would take a new shot closer and closer and I'd keep going closer until couldn't go any closer. Uh, next. Um, okay, the, the lighting is just uh, not dynamic enough. This is like soft uh, window light. And when you're doing a still life like this, if the lighting is not dramatic and the subjects are not so dramatic, you're, you're not going to have a picture with a lot of energy. Um, but again, I would zoom in more. You don't always have to show the whole shoe rack. You know, find some interesting shoes, put them close together and get in there. So you're feeling the, whatever it is, the laces, the texture of the thongs, whatever it is. I want to feel the, what's going on. Uh, next. Um, well, this the same thing is, is kind of zoom in. Right now, my eye is just all over the place here. And, you know, silverware is great to photograph. Very tricky, by the way, when you start getting in close because you start seeing the camera and the lights and so on. And they make actually special lighting tents to, for photographing things like silverware and glassware. Um, but here, everything has equal weight in, in terms of the composition and the lighting. And so my eye just kind of uh, meanders and I want less meandering and more kind of slap in the face. So that needs, uh, that needs some work. Okay. So okay. we have seven items again, and that means a first and second place. Okay. Um, I think the first place would go to um, the pot. What is this doing to me? All right. And second, uh, I think the concept could be a little better, but I liked how this was handled, the uh, flowers with the magnifier. Okay. And I, I hope, well, first of all, don't take what I'm saying too seriously. I mean, I'm just one guy looking at a bunch of photos, uh, you know, uh, but, but I would say on that one, when I say, okay, that gets second place, sure, be satisfied you got, you got second place. But what I'm trying to tell you is, it's like you're onto something. So go back and, and pursue it, uh, you know, different magnifying glass or move the magnifier in a, different, uh, in a different way, you know, closer to the camera and so on. And, and kind of milk it because, um, it's basically good, but you could, I think, with a little effort, make it a lot more uh, powerful and you'd have a lot of fun. I do variations on a theme. It's, it's like a mantra with me. So I would do this and then I would do 10 other variations. Okay, thanks. We're done with that. So second place tonight goes to Tammy yeah. Smith. Uh, sure. I was down at Green Spring um, Gardens down in Alexandria waiting for our hummingbirds to appear, killing time and... This is what I shot, so that's it. Great idea. And our first place goes to Sarah Pennington. Is Sarah on? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, was having trouble getting my mouse to the mute button or unmute button. Um, yeah, I was taking pictures for this contest a few nights ago. And I was like, you know what has an interesting shape? The teapot. Um, I do see what 
you mean about bringing out the um, striations in the spout rather than the top. So if I go back to this, I will try that. Yeah, what you should do is try a, just get a piece of black paper and white paper and you move those like just on top of the pot and maybe the black paper takes too much light away. So try the light paper and, you know, get it between the light and your object and, and just play around with it. That's the fun. Studio lighting is just a great joy because you can see powerful results from little movements that you make. And then all of a sudden you'll see the, the control you have over what's in front of you. That's the, that's the beauty of studio work. You have total, control. Well done. So while I'm thinking about it, let me put this down here. And I need to do the same up here. Okay, intermediate color. What a, wait a minute, wait a, could you back up? I wasn't sure what I was looking at there. Hold on. Okay. Okay, we're back at the beginning. Okay. Um, sometimes being a judge is awkward because you don't know what something is and it may be really obvious and uh, this is some kind of, I'm thinking a vase or flowers. I, I don't even know, but I don't have to know. Even abstractions uh, appeal to me very often. And this has got a nice abstract uh, 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 quality, but the interesting things are the two uh, black and white objects and then those kind of bubbly shapes around them. And there's too much stuff surrounding that that um, distracts me, frankly. Uh, next. Originally, I said should go through them all one at a time, but I'm thinking this may be more efficient. So I'm just commenting right off the bat. Um, or did you run through them quickly? I can't even remember. Yep, we did run through them. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm focused, so focused, I can't remember one minute ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, kind of unusual colors and glassware. So, yeah, I find that appealing. I get a reaction to that. That's all I'm really looking for. You know, it's like if, if it hits me in the gut, it's good. Okay, that's good. Next. Um, okay, well, this is interesting and very colorful. My problem is it's stilted. It looks like everything was ever so carefully arranged. And 
so it, it, it lacks kind of a sense of, of naturalness or movement. So subject is good, uh, but I, I want like a dog to go and mess that up and then take it. Okay, next. Yeah, this actually suffers from a similar thing where I just feel like somebody who's very, very meticulous and orderly laid these things out for the photograph. And I tend to like things that are a, a bit more naturalistic. And then the background distracts me from the um, lantern. So, um, you know, it's a beautiful lantern, nice shape, interesting stuff, but uh, the background, not good. And, and just a little more natural would please me. Uh, next. Okay, now when I, yeah, when we first ran through and I saw this, big smile. I don't know if you saw it, for me, big smile. Um, anything that makes me smile, life is just, I don't know, it's not always fun. And anybody who can make me smile or even better laugh, uh, I always appreciate. So this had that quality. I think the, it was way too much foreground and you know you don't need the whole butcher block. It doesn't. It doesn't help you. It takes away from what you're trying to to uh, emphasize, and the background is uh, very distracting to me. The concept is is great, and I would just go and redo this, but simplify it and do something else about that. Uh, uh, about the background. And by the way, the wine with the flour and the cheese grater, hmm, not so much. Well, I've, I've said uh, already a number of times about getting in close to what matters, this gets in close. So this grabs me. It would be very helpful using, you know, some lighting and some reflecting cards and so on. If there were highlights, not just on the top of the toothpaste, but on the oozy part of it that's coming down the bristles and maybe a little bit on the brush itself. Um, and I think a background that has a little more contrast uh, would, would help you. I mean, you got white on white on white with a little green and that's, you know, there's something to be said for that. It really emphasizes the green, but I think a little darker gray maybe. So you don't wanna distract from the greenness in terms of other colors, uh, but I'd like to see the shape of the toothpaste a little more. But getting in close like that, I love it. Um, getting in close and colorful and shapes and no distractions. The only thing is I can't figure out, they look like they're on the same plane, but obviously the green thing must be considerably closer because it's quite out of focus and I'm kind of, it doesn't feel right. I would want it to be all in focus, but this is my idea of, you know, getting, doing a detail of something interesting that most people would never pay attention to. You'd use a sponge 10,000 times and you wouldn't look at what a sponge really is. And this gets you uh, doing that. And I like the fact that the, the indentations in the sponge are dark or even going on black to give it some very nice contrast. Next. You know, this is a, this is a very nice still life. Um, you know, I don't know about onions. It's a little unusual, but sure, why not? 
Um, but again, it's for my taste, it doesn't feel spontaneous enough. It feels like everything, even when you're doing studio work, everything is deliberate, but you can do things deliberately that don't look like you're working so hard on getting it balanced and everything having equal weight and so on. So um, uh, I would, I would, maybe this is still set up in your playroom or something. <laughs> I'd go back and, and fit a little bit uh, uh, with it to give something a little more emphasis than something else and a little more lighting that gives things shape. That pair needs some shape. Next. Yeah, here's a little tool we use pretty often. Um, it's actually, if I may say, unlike say the spout on the pot, it's not an, an attractive tool. Interesting, yeah, it's more interesting stuff, I guess you would say. It's not that attractive. It would be more interesting to me if I saw some garlic coming out of it or something. Uh, and then the, the, the kind of the brownish stuff on the foreground, it may be deliberate, but it doesn't seem to go with the picture. So uh, this needs something else, I think, to add to the shape of the sieve and, and it needs something in that foreground that works better. Next. Uh, I'm more into blades than handles. What can I say? Blade, I get an emotional reaction, but here I'm not really paying attention to the blade. I'm looking at the, the handle and whatever that little mark is. Maybe it's a Japanese logo type thing on the, on the, on the knife. And uh, again, the lighting is too flat. So next. Spaghetti stay, water go. Um, boy, if you had water coming out of any of those holes, that would really be cool. Yeah, this is, this is pretty interesting. It's a beautiful um, colander. Um, it's very, very, not very, very, it's just one very dark. Um, I feel like I'm straining a little bit to see what's going on. So a little more reflected light on the right side of the colander maybe, and a little touch more light on the spaghetti. Not bad though, I mean, it's close. I would just do that. And then the, the thing in the background, which I guess is some kind of a spoon, to handle the spaghetti uh, is distracting me because I'm not connecting it with the objects directly and it's very out of focus. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So it's not integrated quite like it could be. This is another shot where I, I, you know, I wish I were there and I could work with the photographer and tweak it a little and maybe they'd like it better or maybe they wouldn't, I don't know. Okay, next. Well, this is a nice little collection of, uh, of Tiffany lamps and with, with a background that, that seems uh, relevant. It's got the, you know, the age quality. So um, I like that. Notice in the lamp on the right, that's a thin blue line that defines the shape, which is uh, which is good. Any any kind of light in there that defines the shape, and compare that to the the lamp stand in the foreground, which doesn't have a highlight of any sort on it. It needs a highlight, especially since it's the lamp in the foreground. And maybe you didn't have enough material, but it's kind of a shame that material is so nice 
that so much of the background is is black. I'm enjoying them looking at the material. Uh, next. Yeah, you know, you can't go wrong with moving in simple colors and shapes. Um, and it all kind of holds together and it doesn't look, you know, too stagey really, even though we all know it is, all studio shots really are, uh, but it doesn't look as stilted because of the curvature of the tape measure and the angle of the navy blue uh, thread. So, yeah, that's that's nice. Next. Now, as a something of a, I wouldn't call me a veteran, but, but I've had to do smoke stuff or some assignments. And it's not so easy to do it. And maybe this is double exposed. I'm not sure how it was done. Uh, you would expect out of a pot that's not on a stove though, not to be breathing steam. So I think it ought to be on a stove or maybe it is, but I'm, I'm not seeing any heating element and it doesn't look like that kind of a, that kind of a pot. So steam out of a, out of a porcelain pot, I don't know. Um, but still uh, a nice effort. Again, the shape of the, of the pot a little bit on the, the flat side. I, I emphasize that over and over. Flat lighting, you know, it may be fine to you, but to me, it doesn't make, it doesn't viscerally make me want to like hug it, kiss it, hold it, stare at it uh, when it's, when it's, the lighting is too flat. Um, next. Well, it's cute with the dog. Got to like that. And, and you got to love the shape of uh, uh, the corkscrew. So, you know, I like the corkscrew. I, I realize I'm, I'm adding critical comments to every picture. So everyone's being treated the same. So like, a, you know, <laughs> they hate it. And, you know, I'm retired now. And so I'm free. I can say whatever I want. Uh, you're losing the cork shoes uh, shape. I know you want to get the tip of it, and at least you have the tip against a dark background. That little bit of dark really helps see the end of the corkscrew. But I'm losing the almost the beauty and elegance of the shape of the corkscrew because it's coming straight at me, no, too too straight toward me. So I'd like to see somehow more of the shape of the corkscrew. And, and the, the lighting is tricky when you have a, anything silver with a dark bottom, you're, you're just always gonna get black. And that's, uh, that's tricky to deal with. You're always gonna lose 30% of your corkscrew in black. It's hard to give it any kind of highlight unless you use a very special technique. Um, anyway, I still, I like it. How's that? Next. Um, okay, it's good. I, I think the fact that it's red is really, really helps. And, you know, it's a black and white photo with one red dot. But why all that space on the top and on the right and even for that matter on the left. Zoom in on this if you can. And let's just look at, yes. Now raise that up a little. A little more, a little more. Okay. I love it. This would be first prize for me if, if it were this because I know what this is about. It's about the, the beauty, the delicacy, the strength, the color, whatever, of the ballpoint pen, the ball and the ballpoint pen with the rest of the pen kind of fading off into oblivion. This I, this I really like. Okay, let's go back. 
And uh, so ask yourself what matters and what can you get rid of in any photo that might make it better and just try your crop tool. And if it starts getting better, keep cropping. And you know, you got a lot of, uh, a lot of digital data now with modern cameras, you can crop in more or you just take another shot. Okay. Well, these are two different things going on here. And it's not working together for me because the household items are almost a contrast or antithesis of the, of the quote. You know, you, want, you have an urgent need to wander and observe with your camera, and then you have a kind of regular kitchen paraphernalia. So it's not delivering the right consistent uh, message, but using that, you know, that uh, board with that stuff as a background to something else might be very interesting. Um, next. So I did a workshop where I took my students to the place in uh, Arizona or New Mexico, I can't remember, where they make these bells. It's like the one place that I'm aware of. It was really fascinating. And the bells by themselves are fascinating uh, to photograph up close. The cat is not interesting compared to that bell. And I'm not sure if the background is helping. I don't know what the background adds to, um, to the subject. It's, 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 backgrounds don't have to distract, but they shouldn't be too dull. Next. Okay, we're back at the beginning. Okay, With and 18 images, you get more to choose. 18 oh, images. Right. You get a first, second, third, and two honorable mentions. Okay. Okay, first is the toothbrush. Why does it keep doing that to me? Show me any ordinary object in some different way, and I'm a, uh, you got me. So, so that's first, and second is mm -hmm. it's tricky, tough for me. There's a lot I like. I'll do the. I'll go with the corkscrew. And then third, uh, I wanna change. Uh, second is the sponge. Sorry, whoever was third. Uh, my eye just went right over that, okay. And now two honorable mentions? Correct. Okay, the, the sunflower, simply because made me smile. I haven't smiled much today, so I'm into that. And the next one is the, what I call close, but half a cigar, the pen point. Okay, so this image is Tim Pennington. Yeah, so I, um, I this is actually a picture I originally took for last year's um, negative space contest. <laughs> and I was come, struggling to come up with, so that's why there was some extra space. I definitely see what you were commenting on, that it's a much stronger picture 
um, zoomed in like that. So, so uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay, next honorable mention. By the way, um, you know, you don't need a macro lens to do something like, you know, get in three or four times closer, five times, six times. You know, they make screw on filters that are rather inexpensive and they're very compact. It's not like carrying an extra lens around when you're out in the field or at home, whatever. You know, they just take up a tiny bit of space. They're not expensive and they're not as sharp as a macro lens, I'm sure. Uh, but I hate carrying around extra lenses. So I always carry uh, those close up filters or alternatively, you can get an extension tube on the yeah, back of I, your I, lens. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I have to check the metadata, but I'm pretty sure I was using an extension tube on these. I used the extension tubes. Okay, well. I, 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 I have a macro lens and never use it because I'd rather just use the extension tubes. Right, but and with I think the, I was using this with the lens baby lens. I'm sorry? I, I think I did this with the lens baby composer lens as well ah. to give the bulk on the outside. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Next honorable mention is Daryl. Um, so I, I give my wife credit for this because um, we were laying in bed last Saturday night and I said, I'm trying to think of an idea. I know I want to use a cheese grater, um, but I don't want to do a standard photo. And she said, how about um, grated sunflowers? <laughs> and I said, oh, I like that. Um, all, all of your comments were um, taken on board, especially with regards to the, um, the background. And I, I thank you for honorable mention. Today is my 60th birthday, and I was hoping to win something today. So thank you. <laughs> right. And now you made me smile again. Well, that was so good. <laughs> Very good. And 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 uh, give your. I'm glad you gave your wife credit. This idea of coming up with a concept uh, is something that is rare for most photographers. They want to see the thing first and then you know arrange it and so on as opposed to just like sitting and meditating and going what would be interesting clever different funny crazy stupid juvenile whatever and just come up with ideas and then go out and do it so this this falls kind of in that category and your wife gets an honorable mention to your honorable mention it does indeed happy birthday thank you third place mr pennington Yeah, so uh, this one I just took earlier this week, trying to come up with something from around the house. Uh, uh, we visit Chateau Morset back when we lived in Blacksburg and one of our favorite wineries. So uh, anyway, that's where it's from. Very good. Second place, Christina Carr. Hey, hey. I don't really know what to say. I was looking at stuff in my kitchen and thought sponge was fun. And now do you name all of your household items or is this just come to your mind? Just this one. The next <laughs> sponge will have I gotta a ask, name, I, don't I, worry. I've got to ask why the green <laughs> part of the sponge is out of focus. Was it closer to the camera? I did a vignette on the bottom of it. it it's one sponge laying completely 90 degrees of the camera. I just wanted to focus in on the blue part. So I did a little vignette. And I think that's why the bottom edge of the green looks so blurry to you. It looks so, okay. so blurry in general, but yeah. Okay. So one, one thought I have, not just for this, but for like everything, is after you take a photo that you like, again, going back to the variations on a theme, try taking this shot and doing a diagonal with that kind of horizon line there and see how you react to it. You know, I don't even know how I would react. I just know I would try different angles and different amounts of blue and green. You know, I do it 10 or 12 ways and, and then look and decide which one feels you get the most uh, gut, gut response uh, from. Absolutely, I appreciate that. Thank you. Congrats. And this is first place, Brushing Up by Christina. 
there wasn't a whole lot of thought process in this. I had to change my toothbrush head and went, oh, that's something that's household. I, I couldn't be as creative as the uh, cheese grater and the sunflowers, but I figured everybody had a toothbrush. So that was as far as I got. I, I mean, do you, <laughs> do you, I'm sure you grasp, it's, it's self-evident really, that you're taking a subject that people see two or three times every day and they don't really pay attention to it. They don't study the bristles. If this were just a tear, tiny bit sharper, I would be feeling those bristles a little bit more. Right. And, and it, you know, and you look at it and you go, you know, it's not the pyramids, but you know, a toothbrush is kind of an interesting thing. Just, <laughs> just uh, you know, geometrically or architecturally or whatever. And you're making the viewer pay attention, maybe for the first time in, in her life or his life. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Christina. Thanks. While I'm thinking about it, pull this down to best can show. Intermediate. Not How are we doing on time, by the way? We are doing great on time. Um, OK. Typically, we target uh, a nine o'clock close, but we did start a little bit late. So uh, we're flexible on the time. But um, OK. Yeah, and you know, I think we're, we're good. Uh, there's not very many in the experience category. So we've got plenty of time, I think. So this is um, intermediate, intermediate monochrome. monochrome. Monochrome, that's correct. Not necessarily black and white, but monochrome. Got it. <laughs> Birthday boy. And we're back. Okay. Um, I am pretty much clueless here. I see like a doll's head, but I see just a lot of darkness and unusual shapes. And I don't know uh, something as kind of a bird angel. I'm, I'm not sure, but this is not getting me to heaven. And maybe that was the objective, I don't know, but um, I'm just perplexed. I don't always have to understand what's going on, but I feel like uh, this is something where the, the person wants me to understand that there's something going on, but I don't, uh, I, I don't, can't figure it out. Okay, next. Well, this is a cute, you know, cute little Scottish Highlander who, really needs a shave. Uh, it's, it's not an interesting enough object and the lighting needs to be more, more interesting. And it's just, it's kind of, it's the whole thing. What's interesting about that thing? Well, that face is kind of interesting. So give me the face. I don't care. I'm, I always tell people when they're photographing, uh, you know, just out, tourists taking pictures I say don't worry about the feet nobody cares about your feet and your shoes with maybe a few exceptions but basically 
we care about faces. Those tend to be the more interesting things in, in most pictures. So give me a face. Uh, next. Well, this is really cool. I mean, I can't tell. It looks like water is pouring in while steam is coming out. So it's a little bit, uh, I'm not too sure what's happening, but I just love all the steamy chaos of it. So uh, I don't know why there's no flame. I mean, if we're gonna have steamy chaos, even if it's uh, done with dry ice or something like that, let me, let me have a little flame. So I feel there's a reason for all this steamy chaos, but that's pretty cool. I like it. Next. Um, well, this is a nice crisp, uh, you know, still life that I could see in a, in consumer reports, you know, what's the best remote control, the circle in the center left uh, perplexes me. I'm not sure what it's, uh, what it's doing there. And, and, you know, one thing I find interesting about this is I've had like everybody else, you know, 27 different remotes and they were all different. You know, you, everybody has like two or three remotes by their TV and they were all different. And, and so this kind of demonstrates that. And I like the, 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 the various shades of gray in there. The whites could be a tad whiter, but they're pretty good. So it's got, it's good processing there uh, on the grays. And uh, I only feel like I'm seeing more background than I'd like to see. So I'd move the one up on the left, I'd crop in. So we don't have maybe, I, well, I can't just put my hand on, my, on, on the screen, but I'd crop in tighter so, uh, so everything would stand out more and I wouldn't at all let my eye go into that background area. No reason for that. Next. Okay, well, we know who the guilty party is here and his wife. And um, uh, this doesn't make me laugh as, as much, but it's kind of cute. Uh, but the the wood is so, here's the word, annoying to me. I don't like this wood. It's, it's like high contrast developing and it doesn't give me a cozy wood feel. So uh, the concept is, is, you know, not as clever as the other one, but it's okay. But the wood just bothers me. Um, so uh, next. So you got a lovely shape with the pot, although I'm losing some of that shape on the left. The tin, not so interesting. Uh, find another pot where, you know, the tin just doesn't add the, uh, the tea strainer, if that's what it is, that makes sense. It goes with, uh, it goes with the pot. I don't know about the plate. Um, and then there's, some kind of a handle, not sure. We, oh, I see, that goes with the, uh, the little measuring device there. So yeah, pick out the objects that are really visually interesting and then create the composition with those. So that's my thought, next. Um, Okay, because this doesn't have the color of the, the sponge in the, the other segment, what's interesting here, the, the holes and the bubbles. Holes and bubbles like this only get interesting when you get in. So zoom in on this about 70% if you can. Yeah, so that's more interesting. Can you zoom in another click? Yeah, and now lower the picture, uh, drop it down 
because the bubbles here, now all of a sudden I'm looking and I'm going, God, every bubble has a white edge to it. Look at the intricacy, look at the different shapes. I mean, I could lose myself in those bubbles for quite a while. And so I would have relatively little of the dark area in the front, but that's fine, I have to have some. And then I'd look at those bubbles. And it really, to me, this is a striking an example, as I could imagine, when you move in close, all of a sudden, there's like electricity to me. So we'll zoom back out and move to the next. Yeah, I did that. I did that. That was part of my bathroom series, but didn't quite make the book. Um, yeah, toilet paper rolls. The reason I didn't have a, a toilet paper roll photo just by itself, toilet paper rolls are boring. They're just boring. And the shape, there's not enough shape and the, and the toilet holder is, you know, not unusual enough. Um, I mean, maybe I could see if you put the, forget the top roll. If you had the bottom roll in the upper left and then a whole lot of toilet paper coming down, that might be more interesting. Or maybe if you had cat's claws because cats, I mean, the only reason not to do the toilet paper in that configuration is a cat can unroll it, or a dog maybe, uh, can un unroll the whole roll. <laughs> That's something I learned from studying toilet paper, would you believe? Okay, so uh, next. Ah, our first pictures significantly skewed. Yeah, people have... One of, one of the faults I have in my photography is I tend to like horizon lines on the you know, horizon straight. And it takes, it takes me like a real mental effort to skew things, which so often makes them more interesting. It's a, it's a fault I've had through my whole career. I don't tend to like turning a camera, but then when I do it, the results interest me more and that interests me. It's like it's kind of sliding off the table. It's an interesting shape. Uh, the marble or whatever it is, is, you know, it's got a little bit of interest as well. So that's a good little still life there. I think if there was something in the pestle, by the way, the mortar and pestle, you know, like uh, if you could see a little, I don't know, ground up salt or something in there. It would give me a sense that I was in on the act. I was seeing something uh, that was just happening. Next. Uh, well, this would have been a pretty good cover or back cover of Simon and Garfunkel's book, a uh, record. Um, so what's with the jelly beans or whatever they are? doesn't go, doesn't go. You cropped in, you don't have the whole parsley. Great, you don't need the whole lid, but I'm seeing the parsley, I'm seeing the sage. Um, the time, it looks like it, I can't tell whether it has a lid, it looks like it doesn't, but you don't have to be consistent as long as it's visually uh, interesting. And you know, the lighting isn't, isn't too bad on this. Um, so you just got to get rid of that thing on the upper left, because to me, it doesn't go with uh, um, the uh, spices. So we got a little something gimmicky, double exposure, whatever, whatever it is, kind of, um, you know, makes me look again. Uh, double exposures used to be incredibly tricky to do. You really had to know what you were doing when you had film cameras, in terms of taking the film out and putting it back in and so on. And now they're so much easier with digital cameras that have a double exposure feature. People should do many, many, many more double exposures because it gives you the sense that you could, you know, you, it gives you the ability to 
put something with something else that uh, goes with it when you're doing a double exposure. And this is kind of interesting. Um, so I like this, uh, I like this effort. Okay, next. Okay, right off the bat, this is two or three levels above the other two fork pictures I've looked at. The shape with the reflections, uh, just, just plain interesting. I, I think we could use, can't tell it. No, no, scratch what I was about to say. I'm not saying it. Yeah, I just think this has a real interesting aesthetic to it. And it's using forks as a, like as an architectural design device in a way that I find very appealing. Um, next. Okay, when you do something like this, it's all about lighting and giving it texture and shape. And here I'm starting to get a little sense of the texture in the toe areas of the two shoes, but otherwise it's, it's kind of a blast of uh, white. And I mean, it would be more interesting to me just to have the two toes is the dominant thing in the picture. And maybe you see the rest of the sneaker, maybe you don't. But that tells me somebody has been wearing these sneakers wherever, you know, on the boat or, you know, in the woods, and they put on some miles. So, um, yeah, we've got to work on the lighting to get, to get the texture there. Next. Aha, uh -huh. we don't have to see the whole object. I almost always like part of an object and I can fill in the rest of it. So uh, I like the fact that, that you, you know, you've closed in on this. I don't need that little tiny bit of the one o'clock number, but I guess you did that because you didn't want to lose Kensington. So, okay. And it doesn't really bother me to tell you the truth, but what does bother me is the white background is not which has very little texture the way it's lit, is not bringing my eye to the clock. It's pulling my eye away from the clock. Don't want that. It's about the clock. So don't, it's like you get somebody's head and their eyeballs and force them to look where you want them to look. Don't let them get distracted with things that are not directly relevant to what you're trying to say. So, um, here we are. Next. Well, this is an interesting piece of, uh, of sculpture, but the, the lighting of the three main shapes in the front is, is flat. So when you're photographing sculpture, and I've done actually a lot of that, I had a client who was a, a very accomplished sculptor and um, and I just did his whole collection. He wanted me to more or less represent what he had done, which is what this does. But unless you're doing it for a sculpture catalog, it seems like your objective is to use the sculptural shape as a starting point and then to create something a little bit new, like where the sculptor might look at it, the designer, whoever, and say, oh, you know, it's pretty cool. I never saw it from quite that angle or with quite that light. So, you know, add something other than just representing what you, what the sculptor uh, created in a straightforward way. Uh, next. I'm old enough to know Howdy Doody. And I don't, this is not Howdy Doody, but it's, it's younger brother or something. Um, yeah, I like faces. Give me a face. I don't like feet. So get in closer and a little more interesting on the, the lighting to make the eyes uh, stand out. 
and maybe have the mouth open so it has a little bit more uh, energy. Uh, next. Oh, Charlie McCarthy? Is that Charlie? No, I don't think that was Charlie McCarthy. But anyway. Um, you know, this is interesting. I, I, I always like shadows that almost define and overwhelm the object itself, which is kind of what I think is going on here. And the object is like an egg cutter. Um, doesn't matter what it is, it's an interesting object. Um, it's, it's a little off balance. The right leg of the shadow is, is down a, a little and that, I don't know, feels a little funny, but, um, uh, but the object itself is very interesting. I'm not sure if the background helps or hurts. It's kind of like floating in space with this separate background behind it that the lines are distracting me from the shape and the shadow of the object. I assume that's a shadow, maybe it isn't, I don't know. I say stupid stuff or I see things in a funny way sometimes. Okay, uh, next. Okay. We have 17 images which relates it first, second, third and two honorable mentions. Okay. Okay, first, I love the forks. And this is what I was thinking when I was seeing the forks before. And I said, try something different with the forks. You know, maybe you'll get something. Well, I like the, those forks. And I'm very keen on the, the pot with the steam. And I don't know if it's water pouring in, but it's just got lots of what I call energy. It makes me want to look. Um, And a uh, third is the uh, mortar pestle. And honorable mention will go to that uh, egg slicer. And the next honorable mention is the bowls with that double exposed bowl or whatever it is. Okay. So first honorable mention is Cecilia. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> it, is, it is a multiple exposure. It's actually three multiple exposure. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see three. Icon. My Nikon 750, yeah, yeah. I use my Nikon uh, D750 and it's a triple exposure, three images. Good. I love Good. doing multiple exposures. I do them a lot. I love them. Good, keep doing them <laughs> and then show them at the camera club and keep nudging other people to do them. Yeah. And like, I mean, you know, find, what did I do? I did something with, um, I was photographing a, a person who loved wine, you know, and I double exposed you know, wine bottles on his face or wine grove or something, you know, find things that relate in some way, subject matter, shape, uh, you know, feeling, whatever, and yeah. do it like you yeah. did it. It's cool. I used to do it a lot with film. I did it tons with film and, and my, you know, my, my Nikons do it. I do three exposures and yeah, I love it. It's fun. Good, you good, know what good. you're going to get. That's, that's the cool part. <laughs> Second honorable mention is oh Jack. Yeah, that is uh, that is an egg slicer, and uh, my mother's uh, egg slicer. That's got to be sixty years old and in perfect working order, and uh, the uh, the lines are uh, shadows from a shade on the window. Okay. And uh, I like the shadow. I, I liked the uh, object itself, and uh, I liked 
the shadows that it um, made, uh, I found even, well, a great compliment. Uh, you know, and I, I guess I should have tried without the uh, blinds. It, it almost seemed like um, they might have added, but I guess they could be a distraction too. You know, you know when, when there's too much in a picture, I sometimes harken back to my little expression that um, if somebody says something powerful, like, I love you, I hate you, you don't usually benefit from saying, yeah, and because, and da 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 da, da you know, let the, let the power stuff come through. And so here you have so many different lines and shapes, shadows and all that. And then when you add to it, more of the background, you know, more in the background, it's like, I love you, you and then a lot of other words added, you know, I don't, I don't want them. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right, moving up to third place, we have Elizabeth. Hi, how are you? Well, better for having seen your picture tonight. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for the comments. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a mortar and pestle. And, you know, if I had garlic in there, you wouldn't be able to see it. It'd be at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. But, you you know, squish some stuff around and you could leave. You know, I, I can't say I'm a mortar and pestle expert, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> and, you could throw um, a little something in there to make it look like you were you were doing it. And then you had to go to the stove and then somebody came and snuck the picture in. Uh, got it. Well, I appreciate the comments. But but let me just add that I've seen a few mortar and pestles in my life. And this one is just more interesting because of the quality of the wood. So again, if, if, you, if it was just a typical one, no dice, you know, no soap. But here, because it's the, the wood has all those flavors in it. And then you have a you know pretty nice background there. It works. And I really want to just encourage everyone to try tilting the camera once in a while. And I don't mean two or three degrees. When it's two or three degrees, I always think straighten the damn picture out. So 10 degrees, 15, 20, 30. Okay, keep it up. All right, thanks. Well done. Next, we, my pot runneth over. Patricia. Yep, that's me. Um, I got a uh, order of Omaha steaks and took the dry oh. ice out. And <laughs> I'm a little kid at heart. Who doesn't like to play with dry ice? So I thought, well, wait a minute. And I threw it in the pot. Uh, it's I set up the tripod. It's just light it with the, the light over on the over the stove. Um, and then much later, regret it not turning the flame on underneath would have added to it. And you were right. And you caught that. But <laughs> by the time I realized it was too late and the ice had melted. But right. OK, so next time Omaha Steaks, you, you're right. doing double duty. You do it with the flame. Um, I'm not sure. Isn't that water coming in? It is. That's because, yeah, I, I just took the tea kettle with boiling water and poured it over the dry ice and watched it bubble over and just yeah, so that, with the remote. And shot like, it. Wait a minute, you know, uh, I thought the water's boiling. But here's another idea with your mm -hmm. Omaha steaks. Not the, the next order, you redo this picture and you make it perfect. And the order of Omaha steaks after that, you take that piece of dry ice and you get your lighting all set up before you put your water in and you put a person behind it. And then you start dropping the water in and photograph the person or something else through the steam, the smoke, yeah. or whatever you call it. Yeah. And take advantage of that dry ice while you, while you got it. I mean, you can yeah. buy it commercially too. I know, but the steaks are good, so. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. And first place tonight, Beth Fetter. Yeah, so um, I was taking forks out of the drawer to um, try to figure out how to shoot them for this competition, and they fell, and they were kind of intertwined. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. 
So then I started playing with it. So it was a happenstance. Yeah, well, you know, the happenstance uh, favors the prepared or whatever Oprah says about it. And yeah, so you took advantage of something that you saw. Now, were you the person who did the other fork photos that I saw? No. Oh, okay. Congratulations, well done. Let me take this, add to the best in show collection, move it up to the experience class. Oh, while I'm, while I remember it, there was a question for you, Steve, uh, earlier. You yeah. were talking about a guy who had the lighting book. Uh, who was the guy with the lighting book? Okay, it's not a book. It's online tutorials. I, they were free way back when. When I ran my workshop, he was the guy who did the glamour and nudes workshops. And his name was Joe Edelman, E-D-E-L-M-A-N. And for the longest time, he's been a uh, like Olympus explorer of light or something like that. Fabulous photographer. And his little tutorials, they're, you know, they're a few minutes. He'll take a ball and he'll run a light around the ball and you'll see how different a ball can look depending upon where the light is. So, you, you know, you have to, I guess, wander through his website to, um, uh, to find it. But that would be an overall observation I have made from looking at these pictures that more attention needs to be paid to the lighting, which is to say the direction of the lighting, whether you're using fill light or bouncing some light and using it to create shape and focusing the viewer's eye where you want it to go. Okay, thank you for that. That was in the chat, so I wanted to bring it up while I remembered it. All right, we okay, are good. in experience color. And we're back. Okay. Um, yeah, no, there's just not enough going on here for my um, for my taste, and I tend, with a thousand exceptions, to like a little bit of edge on the on an object to give it a little definition. Otherwise, it, it looks to me like some somebody came along and took a bite out of the phone, um, even though I know what the real shape of the phone is. And the word basement, you know, that's such a, a, a dominant thing going on in the picture. So basement, you know, if it said, I mean, I don't wanna get political, if it said Trump or something, <laughs> Biden, I don't know, some, you know, pick a word if you can, uh, can do it uh, that that's a little more interesting than basement and i realize that's an intercom and you got it set up with the basement but that's the breaks well this is fun it's cute it's different i like the the scissors the spoon and fork and the tools because they're variations on the X theme and the other things don't fit into that pattern. So I guess they're O's and versus X's. Um, yeah, maybe I wanna see one more O. It's cute, it's different. It, it you know, makes me look, I like it, okay. This is like chess in a glass or something. I, 
I'm not sure what's going on. And the background is, is distracting me a little bit, but it's certainly an interesting object and very tricky, I'm sure, to uh, light effectively. It's an interesting thing, you know, I'm kind of curious about it. So uh, I wish it were just a hair brighter. I find myself straining a little bit to look at the uh, pawns or whatever it is they are. Okay, next. Um, as a general rule, I like negative space. When you have strong things going on, you don't need stuff going on everywhere. And this has a lot of negative space, um, but somehow for me a little too much here because I want, my eye wants to get into the granules of the um, paprika or whatever it is. And because there's so much white and there's so much else going on, I'm not getting into the granules. That's really the subject. That's what interests me. Just zoom in on that part of the photo a bit. Yeah, I mean, that interests me. And if you had a little bit of the tops of spoons above that, that might be an interesting counterpoint. So you see what I'm saying? The three spoons, you lower the three spoons, get rid of some of that white space, and then really show me the, that red stuff. So that would make me like that better, but I do like the picture, I do. And I like the red, whatever it says, you know, quarter teaspoon or something like that. The, the red up there goes with the red of the spice. Next. Well, this is one of those, holy gee, what do we got here? Um, I don't know, a koala bear climbing a tree in the rings of Saturn. Hmm. I don't, you know, I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is, there are some pictures that are so out of the normal realm a photography it doesn't make them bad at all, but they they don't have like a photographic quality that I can fully evaluate. But it's yeah, you know, pretty interesting stuff. You know, I don't know. I like uh, I, astronomy was my hobby as a kid. Anything with these kind of cool shapes uh, it gets my attention. I don't know how it fits with that egg shaped something going on there. Next. Uh, so this goes back to my earlier comment. So tidy, so tidy. I'm a slob and maybe I just need affirmation. I don't know. I really am. I mean, you look at my car, I clean it once every month. You know, there's just stuff everywhere. And as a photographer, I had to be a little tidy, but never like this. So it's just... Um, it's not from a kitchen where things have been been worked on. Plus, I'm used to seeing cheese. Hold on, I'll put my glasses on. You know, I don't I don't know what that stuff is. You know, presumably it was ground up by that grater. I don't know. Anyway, sorry, too tidy. I'm a slob. Um now, this is beautiful shapes here. I've seen that shape before. I've always liked it. I like the wooden spoon highlighting that one. The pan gives it, um, it gives everything co cohesiveness as opposed to just throwing them out loose. And I think there's you know more background than I would like, and it's a little brighter than I would like but I, I love the shapes and the feel of this. It has, it has a, a warmth and a, I don't know, just interesting, interesting shapes and colors that could go well in the, uh, the monochrome. I think I might even prefer a, 
like a dark brown background. I'm not sure. I don't know what I would like. I'd have to, you know, a lot of times I don't know. I just try different things. Um, but the background is lighter than the object itself. I don't usually like that. It's, the object could be, I would make it a third of a stop, half a stop brighter, and I'd make the background a stop and a half darker. Next. Yep, that's it. So with seven images, we get a first and second place. Okay, um, first place goes to that last picture. I was giving you my, this is the way to improve it, but I, you know, I think it's a very nice, it's a very nice shot. And there's some shots, and that's one, if you, if you uh, uh, darken the background a little, I could see it blown up really big, you know, like over a couch, something like that. It's got a lot of design feel to it. And, and then, although I didn't like all the negative space, I thought the handling of the spoons with the spice was pretty effective. And that's all I'm allowed? Uh, well, unless you really, really, really want to throw in a third place or- Well, I want to throw in an honorable mention anyway. Sure. And that's the uh, tic-tac-toe. I always appreciate, respect, enjoy, people who do photos that have some kind of a concept, some kind of a brain as well as an eye uh, working. And, and when I look at this, it's not just visual, but I feel a brain in action. And that gets my brain in action and I like that. Okay. So honorable mention goes to, I don't know. This is mine. It's Audrey. Hello, Audrey. Hey, that's my junk drawer. <laughs> and I, I defy anyone to say they do not have a junk drawer somewhere in the house. Uh -huh. Well done. Thank you. Second, second place. Audrey, is this yours? Uh, this is mine. It's uh, Doug Matthijs. Hey, Doug. Yeah, so um, I agree with the comments. I mean, but household items to me, I, if, if I had centered everything onto the, the spice, I think that, you know, I, I wanted to stay with the theme. That's why I did what I did. So um, but I, I, like, I like your comments about, you know, getting closer to it and getting the granularity. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I'd, I'd say about this that I didn't mention. I like very much like the fact that your three spoons are out of focus. That right. brings the eye where you want it to go. So that's effective. Thank you. All right. And then moving up to. Because I'm running out of battery power here because I. Hold on. Let me see how much I have. I can't tell. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me move my spot. It'd be a little embarrassing. I ran out of power here. And while he's plugging in, we'll go ahead and announce okay, Pat. I'm, plugged in. I'm good. Pat, you with us tonight? I don't see Pat, but this is Pat what uh, Pat W. I, I don't want to embarrass myself with his last name. But yeah, Pat, you there? First place. Uh, we are here. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you fine. Is our Great. photographer there? Unfortunately, it appears not. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, Pat Pat W is uh, it, Pat Watanusup, I think is how we pronounce his last name, but he goes by Pat W. Well, if you could, if you could just tell her, you know, obviously I like the photo. Just try, humor me and and, and knock the background down a stop and a half and the main subject up a stop and see if she likes it better. Just send her that message. Will do. All right, well, let me go ahead and come back out. Put Pat's photo in best in show collection. Okay, last series is experienced monochrome.
And we're back. Okay, uh, well, I've already recognized something very similar to this. And, and I liked that one better uh, than, than this. I'm not even sure quite what's going on on the, the thing coming out of the fork there. But anyway, not important. Okay, I like the other one better. So enough said. Well, this is one of those kind of concept type photos. And this is one of those close, but no cigar. That's a great prop, but that's not an interesting use of the prop. You got to find another use of this prop. Everything is fine. The hand, uh, you know, I just want to see that corn in some other situation, some other context. And then I think you have a, a winning thing, although I would tend to move the, the corn off to the, if you're gonna keep it off center, move it left of center rather than right of center. Um, so no cigar, but keep at it with, that's a, that is so fun, that idea, I love it. Um, the lighting in this is, uh, or the double exposure or whatever it is, is, is pretty cool, but I'm not seeing the Baby Jane or whatever, what was that movie, whatever happened to Baby Jane, where there was some like creepy doll, I think. Um, so the lighting is, is great. And the idea of the chair is great and the stairway is great, but then the focal point uh, loses me. It's too small and not uh, dr dramatic and doesn't explain, doesn't give me a feeling of what's going on. I mean, you want this to be the the poster for some creepy movie, I think. Um, so you need to do something else with that in, in that chair. Or you maybe double expose a person in the chair and have them in the chair and then get out of the chair and they'll be like ghostly. That might be pretty cool. Um, these are a lot of interesting shapes, almost too many shapes. And then the pattern distracts me from the shapes. Um, and the lines aren't straight. So somehow there's just a little bit too many lines and curves. So I get distracted. I, I almost think I'd rather no spoons and no base, no, no like Formica tile stuff. Just let the spoons uh, speak out. Okay, next. Okay, this is, I think, one of the great shape subjects. I've seen it done before, I've studied it. This is like an industrial photo. And, uh, and I think it's, it's done admirably well, particularly the way the teeth and the, and the, the round uh, gear are, are lit in a way that you can feel them. I don't need the, the foreground, the black uh, kind of fabric. That just distracts me. Um, but the rest of it is, is nice. There's very shapely lighting, a little bit of uh, light spilling in and the background is nice. That little highlight on the, on the circular area. So this is, this is a, a nice, uh, still life. And this is um, a surefire subject. It's too dark for my taste. 
I just feel like I'm, I don't like it when my eye is struggling, when I want, when I feel like I want to hit the, the screen button that brightens the screen. And I don't know what's going on in the lower right that the chopsticks are pointing to, but whatever it is, it's distracting me from an exquisitely nice still life with the, you know, with the bowls and the chopsticks and so on. So if we got rid of that thing on the bottom right, which I don't like, but you may love, and it may be important to telling your story and you brighten it up about a stop, um, this would have been like first prize for me. Okay. So I get- uh, First and first. second place, yep. Okay. Uh, well, first is the, um, the corkscrew. And, and next is the bowls with, uh, that I thought were too dark, but I still like the subject and the photos. And I just wanna say before we end, whoever did that corn cob, corn cob thing, give yourself another shot at that. I mean, that could be wonderful in the right context. It's, it's so rare I get to see something where I just go, oh, that is so funny, clever, uh, to me anyway, and I use rollers a lot, moved into a new house, you know, not that long ago, not a new house, but a house that needed a little paint. And, and when I saw that, it just big smile. So keep up with those concepts. So second place goes to Pat, who again is not with us tonight and still hasn't joined. And first place, Robert Miller. So I appreciate the comments. Um, I was playing around with the corkscrew and like you had suggested earlier in the critiques, I tried a lot of different camera positions and it wasn't until I found this one that was a little bit down looking up a little bit that I liked the composition. So I appreciate the feedback. Sure. Now take a look, by the way, I'm, I'm giving this a second look at the handles. Look at the texture on the left and the definition on the right of those little ridges. Even when you're not conscious of what exactly is making you like a photo, you're subconsciously pulling all that information in and reacting to it. And so by lighting it the way you lit, both of those handles really look good to me. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, one last decision. Best in show. Ah, right. Would you like to see them all full size again? No, no, no. I got them in okay. my head completely and I like I like these pictures. John, I don't think that's right. Uh, what, what did I, how did I screw Yeah, up? you've got too many in here, John. Yeah, John, my tic-tac-toe did not win. So that should right, have- that was, ah. that was a honorable. Benchy. Very, very good. And, and Pat's bowls did not win. Oh, so we're just looking at first place. Yeah, they, they, they should have all been first place. And uh, I, that was user error, obviously. Two. So we got, we still have too many. I don't think, but the, the pen is not, uh, yeah, the pen is not first place. Thank you. The triple exposure bowls, oops. Yep. And the flower, the flower was second place or third place or something. All right, that one and this one, correct? Magnifying glass? Yep. There we go. Thank you for that, folks. Uh, well, yeah, I'm struggling a little here. Just give me a second, would you?
Okay, I'm I'm going to go with um, the corkscrew. And this this is quirky. I mean, I like the subject. I love that subject. It's just a great thing in the house, and I and I like the way it was uh, com composed and handled. Although I don't need all the left and right, and I certainly don't need the bottom. But everything about the composition is good. The subject is good, and I can't get it out of my head that this is a politician raising his hands or a performer asking for recognition. A performer. It, it, in other words, it's like a human. There's a human quality with a head and arms to me that I've that I've noticed as well. But mostly, it's just uh, it benefits from a good subject, uh, thoughtfully lit. Yeah, when you said a performer, immediately I started thinking of, of a particular song <laughs> from a '70s group. <laughs> really. Yeah, with the with an eclectic mix of characters in the group, uh, it was singing about uh, some kind of club. Started started with a Y. I can't. Hmm. Anyway. Okay. Young young uh, village people YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody picked up what I was laying down. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Great job, Robert. Thanks, John. All right, folks, again, nice set of images. Great feedback from Steve. Appreciate you stepping in, Steve, and helping out. It was really good to have you uh, provide your, your insight and your comments. Um, so and with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Again, we're looking for uh, Doug Matthijs. And yep, Doug. It may still be on. Uh, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I was pumping you up for February's discussion on the 10th, talking about business of photography. Yeah, so uh, if you want to try to make some money with the photography that you're doing, I'll try to give you a good insight on that. Um, the pros and the cons. Um, will you give up the love of photography if you go in business? Or you could make a lot of money with your photography. So Let's see. And then uh, I'll spend time going over the pros and cons and give you uh, online versions. Uh, what would happen if you went in a gallery, if you went online through somebody like Fine Art America, or if you did it yourself. So we'll cover that on February 10th. Excellent. Looking forward to it. Can, and, can I sign out because uh, I yes, haven't had dinner yet? Absolutely. Steve, again, very much appreciate your help. And sure. we'll My pleasure. pleasure. It's always good to look at great photos. I enjoyed it. Great. Take care, right. everyone. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye.